Joining me in studio today is the one and only Josh Ryan. Josh, thank you for this. Thank you, as always. Well, uh, this weekend we saw a little bit of ups and downs on the ice with the Bobcats team here. Indeed, obviously you have the real bad setback to end the weekend against the Spruce Grove Saints. Obviously a tough team, a veteran team that's, uh, you know, pretty recently won uh, the league title. But again, it's not a great result after you get a big win in overtime uh, just a couple of days ago against the Fort McMurray uh, Oil Barons. It is still a sign that their play is improving. I mean, the last time we talked about the Bobcats, they've had a lot of these one goal losses after almost going winless uh, for a portion of October, November. They've now added a couple of wins in the past few weeks. So there is improved play there. They've kept just within reach of you know mathematically keeping themselves alive for a playoff spot down the road if they could string together a few wins but they definitely need better uh, night to night results you can get these big overtime wins you can't lay a goose egg like that or not a goose egg but let's say uh, a stinky egg an egg that has no uh, good smell coming from it whatsoever when you lose 7-2 even if it's on the road for sure, and I mean, like you said, they were starting to get a couple wins here at the end of November, early December, and especially after that 5-4 win over Fort McMurray in a, in a must-win game, you know, taking it all the way to a shootout there after being down by a couple goals and just really battling. You want to follow those kind of games up with the momentum. Unfortunately, giving up seven goals is not the way to do that, but I mean, I'm sure Nigel Dubé, they're... Uh, at practice in this week, heading into the Bonneville matchup, they're really going to be focusing on a couple key defensive aspects in their game. Absolutely, and that, as you said, it's a big game on Wednesday against the uh, Pontiacs, obviously a uh, geographical rival that they'll have to play against, but also a team that hasn't totally gotten to its own level of consistency yet, so maybe they can find that opening. And certainly the bon Pontiacs have had their way with the Bobcats in recent years, especially last season. So chance if you want to gain some momentum before the Christmas break comes up here pretty quick that'd be a good time to do it in the middle of the week for um, sure and like you said it's a team that's still trying to find their identity as well so absolutely PBR was the other big uh, weekend event uh, specifically in Lloydminster thanks to the winter classic it was here Dakota Butter taking home uh, the championship and this was a bit of a rebound for him is how I would understand it for sure after the PBR Canada final uh, just under a month ago in Saskatoon where you know he was set up after the day one to be the eventual winner but then he had two buck offs uh, it was really big for him especially in an event he wasn't actually planning on coming to uh, this weekend but because he is a Saskatchewan boy he thought might as well try and get some early points in his season before he heads down to the US for a little bit of their monster energy tour um, but he had uh, one ride of 80, scoring an 85, and one with a night high 89, which was just a phenomenal ride. And I mean, there's a couple phenomenal riders there between Aaron Roy, Jared Parsonage, Dakota Butter, just a really star studded uh, lineup there. And another star studded lineup that's been in Lloyd Minster is the Rustlers. Yes, yeah, certainly two uh, really good women's volleyball and basketball teams in town. Uh, the men's teams, while in playoff positioning, the women's teams are nationally ranked. Uh, the women's basketball team currently sitting atop the North Division. The women's volleyball team second in the division, but also within the top 15 at a 9-3 and three record. That's pretty good going into the break. Um, we didn't expect them to drop really after the last weekend because they both uh, maintained their uh, win streak heading into the break. Though there's maybe just a chance that the women's volleyball team might have dropped because they almost lost in five sets to the Wolves, who are, of course, an under 500 team. That being said, they were still able to pull off that win. Now it's an interesting uh, second half shaping up for them where they have a couple of easier weeks and then all the toughest competition comes in the latter half. So this is a nice finish to the semester when we talked about obviously the win. Now they can also know their standing spot is assured. Now it's a question of what, how they recover over the course of the holidays. Now Josh, what if they were to lose you know, one of these early games? How would that affect their playoff picture? Well, it would certainly knock them out of the ranking from the CCAA. As far as their playoff picture is concerned, the chances of them missing the postseason is 
almost a mathematical impossibility at this point because of how tightly knit the teams in the bottom half of the bracket are. There's three teams right now sitting at four and eight between Grand Prairie, Keanu, and Nate. I think Grand Prairie will definitely end up being the best of those teams. But in terms of where they finish, in terms of the first, second, or third in the, in the uh, North Division, they're only two wins back of first. They're also one win up on third. So there is a chance that if they have an early loss, that could affect them a little bit later. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how these wrestler teams will finish up their season.